Hello everybody, this is John Finn, Church Without Walls International. Hope you can hear me now. <laughs> I'm trying a different microphone approach. Hey, we found out that some people who watch on YouTube have difficulty with their, um, uh, with their audio. And we found out that YouTube turns the volume down automatically. When you go from one video to the next, YouTube will, uh, will do that. And so as a result, uh, people watching different videos on YouTube, and it seems to be with just certain ones, they automatically turn the volume way down. So each person, if you watch this on YouTube, you have to go to the bottom of your screen, turn the, the volume up uh, manually each time. So anyway, Church Without Walls International, supernaturalhousechurch.org or cwowi.org, cwowi.org, Church Without Walls International. John Finn, it's all about the, the discipleship process and today finishing up uh, part three of three of Can Anyone See Jesus? In part one, I shared my mentality as a teenager that the book of Acts was normal Christianity. I was raised in a denomination and as a teenager went to teenage uh, you know, parties, quote unquote prayer meetings, there were really parties in the Lord because we celebrated Jesus. It was worship, there was laying on of hands, miracles happened, prayers were answered, people testified about things that God did in their lives. It was so very different than the church that I was raised in. And I remember, as I shared in the first part, I was standing there in my room and realizing the book of Acts is normal Christianity. So that's how I grew up. That's my mentality. So I expect to see uh, visions and dreams and see angels and the Lord and have laying on of hands and miracles happen and everything else, casting out demons a whole bit. And so, and so that's how I grew up. And last week I shared about the beginning of the visitation with the Lord on October 1st, 1986, uh, which he, he taught me how, he said, I want to teach you how the Father communicates. And one of the things to understand in this is that people are looking for words all the time. And most of the time, the Father communicates in non-verbal means. Even in John 16, 13, Jesus said, When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that's what he will speak. And he will show you things to come. Guide, speak, and show, and only one of those is verbal. And so when the Lord appeared to me in October 1986, and October 1st, 1986, and he used two examples from his own life, as I shared last week, that um, when the man was let down through the roof and he said, You're, I forgive you of your sins, your sins are forgiven. And the scribes there said within themselves, who can, who can forgive sins but God only? And, and Mark 2.8 says that, that he perceived, when Jesus perceived in his spirit their thoughts, when he perceived their thoughts, and I shared how the Lord said he didn't read their mind, but their body language was a clue and it caused him to look inside his spirit to see what was happening there. And so this is the thing that I talked about last week is that your mind is the middle point of a teeter-totter with your physical senses on one end and your spirit man senses on the other. The Lord referred to the, the two men who had died in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Both men went to their respective places, their bodies buried on the earth, but they went to their respective places. They saw one another. They heard one another. The one wanted water. Uh, he wanted a drink of water. Uh, they had all the normal senses. And the Lord shared with me at that time, he said, your, your physical senses are actually rooted, find their source in your spirit man's senses. And I shared how the physical senses are how we understand and maneuver and walk in and live in the physical world. But your spirit man has senses as well. Because those two men who were dead, whose bodies were dead on the earth, they saw one another, they heard one another, they, there was taste involved with the water, obviously touch, etc. And so, and so that's the focus there. And so I'm picking it up from that point. So when the Lord shared with me both out of, out of uh, that example in Mark chapter 2 and then also Luke 8, 46, and he made this statement, and this is what the key for, for today. He said this, he said, the things of the Spirit often move from the vague to the specific. All right, things often move from the vague to the specific. And he gave the examples of how the man was let down through the roof, and he said, your sins are forgiven, and there were lots of people in that room, but it was the scribes who he specifically perceived in his spirit what they were thinking. And in Luke 8, 46, he referred to the fact that everyone was jostling him. That street, all his, he, he used the word, all his physical senses were firing. He was, because of everything that was happening, but he perceived in his spirit, he perceived that power had gone out from him from the woman 
with um, the hemorrhaging issue. And so he talked about how things go from the vague to the specific. And then he picked it up, and this is where I'm picking it up. He said, he said, when you prophesy, how do you do that? How does that happen with your eyes open or closed? And I said, well, typically I'm laying hands on a person with other people. My eyes are closed. And he stopped and he said, why do you do that? Why do you shut your eyes? And I said, well, and then it became a self-answering thing. It's like, I want to shut out my physical senses so I can concentrate on my spirit man. And he said, exactly. And he talked about how much of those words were in feeling, were in visual, like little pictures and words that I would receive. Uh, and sometimes I would hear legitimately, I would hear the Holy Spirit say thus and so. But oftentimes there were pictures and oftentimes there was like a feeling conveyed from the Father into my spirit. And then I would not as a thus saith the Lord, but rather just as a person saying what it feels like or what I'm sensing is. And, and communicate that. But the point is, he said that you shut your eyes to do that. And, and, he said, and he said, moving from the vague to the specific. And I talked about to him, I said, I said yeah, I said, I'll, my mind, I said, somebody will need prayer and my mind will shift to my spirit, man. I automatically shift to see what is in there. And he, and he said, exactly. And out of the vague comes the specific. Out of the logos comes the rhema. And it was, and it was eye-opening for me. And then he did this. He said, this is what I, I want you to do the same thing now. And instantly he disappeared. He just disappeared. And, but I heard his voice and he said, where am I? And, you know, what I did was I shut my eyes. I prayed in the spirit and I'm sensing his spirit all around. I mean, I could feel him, you know, the, the presence of God in my spirit. I can feel all around. But what it felt like was a more dense area ahead of me, about uh, 15 feet, um, maybe, you know, three, uh, excuse me, about five meters, four or five meters in front of me. And I, and I opened my eyes and I could still feel the presence of the Lord. But in my spirit man, I was like looking in my spirit man, which occupies the same space. And, and when I looked uh, in where I felt it, his presence, and like I said, it was more dense, it was heavier, it was weightier. And when I looked in that direction, it was, it was kind of fuzzy. It was like, have you ever looked at a road, a hot road, and you see how the wavelengths, how the, the heat and the light, uh, the heat bends the light, so it's all fuzzy and wavy. And I looked in that area, and suddenly I could see that. Now, as my physical eyes, I saw the village around me, I saw the trees, I saw everything like that. But in my spirit, man, suddenly I, I could sense that. And, and then it's like, as I sensed it and I, I focused on it, it's like it became clear, and pretty soon he became clear out of the fuzziness suddenly boom it was jesus standing there and he said see he said you move from the vague to the specific and i said i need a, a another you know do you have another example and he said have you not read in acts 14 8 and 9 where paul was in lystra and there was a man who was lame from birth and it said that as paul was ministering to them and speaking to them he perceived that man had faith and it says he steadfastly beheld him perceiving he had faith. And he talked to me about how there were many people in that room, but, but Paul noticed in his spirit, his mind picked up on his spirit. He perceived, he discerned something in his spirit. And, and the Lord said he had to lock eyes on him to take account of what he was sensing in his spirit, thus moving from the vague to the specific. And he said, you must do this. You must train yourself in this. And then the Lord graciously, after he did that, he disappeared again. And, and this time I didn't shut my eyes. My eyes were wide open. I, I got it at this point. And instantly I could see that fuzziness. And then almost just as quickly, just shroom, it was the Lord. And he did this a total of, of one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. And then the fourth time, that was it. And so I, 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 that is the lesson for today. That was the first part of that visitation uh, that, I, that I shared uh, last week. And that process of seeing something and then switching back and forth between your spirit and soul. It's, it, it's happened to me so many times when I, when I go into a restaurant and I'll, I'll ask the father very commonly, do you have something for this waiter or for this waitress? Uh, when I go to a store, lots and lots of people, but maybe one person, it's like I'm drawn to them. What happens is it, in the beginning processes, your mind picks something up in your spirit, but you're not really sure what it is, but you feel somehow on the inside, you feel like drawn. It's like you can't help it, but this person just keeps crossing your path or you keep seeing them and you think on them. And that's the spirit trying to get your attention so that you will, in the middle point of that teeter-totter, kind of shut out the physical senses as you function, as you walk around, say, a store. Um, 
but you see this person and then in your spirit, man, you check and then it becomes clear that person's depressed or that person's going through a tragedy. And the thing is their physical uh, appearance, their body language can, can also arrest your attention. And then you say, okay, father, do you have anything? You know, you can, you can say, oh, there's something in my spirit. It feels like depression or something like that. And then you look at the person, they're hunched over. They're just gloomy, a sour look on their face and boom, you can pray for them. Um, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes that's all that's required. I remember one lady in particular, I felt that exact thing. I could tell it was a spirit of depression. I said a quick prayer for her and rebuked that spirit of depression off of her and smiled and got something down off the shelf for her that she asked me for. And, uh, and I said, Father, I wish I could do more. And he said, he said, it's okay. He said, you've done what I've uh, asked you to do for her today. And so sometimes it's just little snippets like that. Uh, you go into a place, you walk around. And the thing is, if you if you grew up around a particular sin in your family, like alcoholism or, or abuse or, or lust or something like that, when you grow up, you know what that, that demonic spirit feels like. And so you can walk through an airport, you can walk through a store, you can walk through whatever the case may be, and you can get a sense that cashier that takes your money, you know, you can get a sense. It's like, oh, you know, I can, in your, in your mind, you're, you're bearing witness in your spirit saying, oh, that person's struggling with alcoholism or that person's an addict. And, and you can look at them and you can see a world worn uh, look on their face. Maybe they don't have any teeth. Maybe they've got battle scars from life, but that arrests your attention. But when you shift your attention on inside to your spirit, then revelation comes. You move from the vague to the specific. So like I said, there's much more to that visitation in my book, Pursuing the Seasons of God, which I've offered for free, the PDF here. Anybody who emails me at cwowi at aol.com. That is some of my earlier visitations from roughly April of 1986 to 1989. And, uh, and of course, if you email me, I'm happy to, to upload that PDF to you, uh, some of the details there. Also, my series on how to be led by the Spirit and, and things of that nature go into some detail as well. But the point is, you can train yourself to live like this. You can di it's a discipline. And I'll go, I'll go a period of time, hours, and I'll go, oh, man, I really haven't checked with my spirit. You know, and, and same thing with praying in the Spirit. It's like I'm continually bringing myself back to that discipline of, of testing. But every decision I make, my wife and I always test, test it. Uh, test the spirit, so to speak. It's like, is there, is it okay to do this? When shall we do that? And you'll get a witness in your spirit about it as your mind searches down on the inside. You're not looking for God out here. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're looking on the inside and your mind will perceive and, and be led and guided by the spirit into uh, what he has for you. But every major decision I check, is it okay? Like today, I've got to take Chris and run down to Tulsa and it's raining and everything, but I checked in my spirit. Is it okay to go? We're going to be safe, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there's nothing uh, grieving me, nothing heaviness, nothing like that in my spirit. So yeah, I know we're going to go have a good time. He'll come back home tonight, eat spaghetti for dinner, and we'll have a wonderful time. The day's all laid out, but I will continually shift back and forth between my physical senses and my spirit man throughout the day. That's how I live. All right, I hope that's been a blessing to you. Talk to you next week.